Hello, friends and neighbors. This is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John, St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin. Great to have you join us again as we continue our series looking at the Augsburg Confession of 1530. As the Lutheran princes stood before Emperor Charles V and uh, with the, the help of Philip Melanchthon, the Augsburg Confession is a statement of what they believed as Lutherans as they defended, as they stood up for their right to practice their Lutheran faith, to practice uh, Christianity uh, as, as they were doing. And so they had opportunity to explain to Emperor Charles V the things that they were doing or the things that they were not doing. And the second section of the Augsburg Confession deals with abuses in the church that the Lutherans had done away with. And so Article 24, we turn our attention to the Mass, abuses connected with the Mass. Now, as a little bit of a a precursor here, uh, these are external things now, these abuses. They're external things. These are in the practice uh, of the church, and so they're noticeable. And one of the noticeable things, uh, one of the noticeable differences between the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church is the celebration of private Masses that uh, both churches celebrate the Lord's Supper, celebrate the Mass, but uh, Lutheran churches do not celebrate private Masses. In other words, uh, I as a pastor do not sit down and celebrate all by myself the Lord's Supper. Uh, Nobody requests me to do that, and even if they did, I would not do it. Uh, But in the Catholic Church, this is common practice, and you can go online to, uh, to various websites, Catholic websites, to request either from your, your local parish or request from, uh, from a monastery, request a private mass. You can order a mass card. I think they're about $10 a piece, or you can give more if you, if you choose, uh, but indicating that, that uh, you purchase that card and you, can, you put the name of the person that you want uh, to be remembered in that mass, and they will say a mass for your loved one. So that's a, that's a significant difference between the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church. And that is uh, one of the abuses that the Lutheran princes recognized and stated in Article 24. This is a longer article, so we're going to break it in half. We're going we're gonna to address, uh, address it in two parts. So let's get started. Article 24, about the Mass. Our churches have, are falsely accused of doing away with the Mass, for we have kept the Mass and celebrated it with the highest reverence. We also continue nearly all the usual ceremonies, except that we now sing German as well as Latin hymns. These were added to teach the people, for ceremonies are needed for this reason alone, to teach the uneducated people what they need to know about Christ. Paul commanded the church to use a language understood by the people. Uh, And this was a noticeable thing, too. Uh, And until recently, in the last, what, 60, 70 years, Catholic churches, uh, worship was always done in Latin. It was a Latin mass. And only uh, more recently in the the 19th, you know, the 20th century, that uh, the mass was allowed to be said in the language of the people. Well, that's something that the German Lutherans started Uh, They wanted the people to be able to participate and understand what was being said, what they were singing, what they were saying in worship. And so uh, they started using both German and Latin hymns in the celebration of the Lord's Supper. And so we go on. Uh, Paul commanded the church to use a language understood by the people, but human laws also demand the same thing. Those who are properly prepared are used to taking part in the sacrament together. And this also increases the reverence and devotion of public worship. So we still require people to be uh, prepared to examine themselves, to be examined by the church, to make sure that they, uh, that they understand what the church teaches, what the Bible teaches, what we believe as Christians, what we believe about the Lord's Supper. For no one can take part unless he is first examined. The people are also taught about the dignity and use of the sacrament and what a great comfort it brings to troubled consciences. In this way, they learn to trust in God and to expect and ask from him all that is good. In this connection, they are also instructed about other false teachings on the sacrament. 
This kind of worship pleases God, and proper use of the sacrament nourishes true devotion toward God. Therefore, it does not appear that our enemies celebrate the Mass more devoutly than we do. As Lutherans, we hold the Lord's Supper in high regard. We value it. Just because we don't practice private Masses doesn't mean we don't value the Lord's Supper. And I hope you treasure the Lord's Supper and what it is, what it means for you. Because in the Lord's Supper, you receive the very price that Jesus paid for you on the cross. You receive the body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. What a treasure to receive that individually, personally. Uh, the assurance that your sins are forgiven. What a value. And, and so we hold the Lord's Supper in high regard and gladly celebrate it whenever it is offered. But we go on. But it is clear that for a long time there has been another very serious and open complaint coming from many good men that masses have been used in a sinful way as a way of making money. If in the Lord's Supper, the grace of God is offered, the forgiveness of sins is offered, and we as a church turn around and sell the Lord's Supper, if we attach a price to the Lord's Supper, we are attempting to sell the grace of God. What a tragedy. For it is well known that in all the churches, all kinds of people have seen masses only being said for fees or stipends. And many men celebrate them contrary to church laws. But Paul severely threatens those who treat the Lord's Supper unworthily when he says, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. If you think that, that by celebrating the Lord's Supper, you are earning something from God, that you are doing something for God uh, and deserving something from him, rather than simply receiving the gift that he gives to you, uh, you are receiving the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. When, therefore, our priests were made aware of this sin, private masses were discontinued among us since hardly any private masses were celebrated except for the sake of money. Nor were these abuses unknown to the bishops. If they had corrected them over time, there would be less conflict between us now. But until the present, they have allowed many corruptions to creep into the church by their own schemes. Now, when it is too late, they have begun to complain about the troubles in the church but this disturbance has simply been caused by these abuses, which were so clear that they could no longer be endured. There have been great arguments about the Mass and about the sacrament. Perhaps the world is being punished for such long-time misuse of the Mass as has been allowed to go on in the, in the churches for so many centuries. And this by the very men who were both able and had the duty to correct them. For in the Ten Commandments it is written, The Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. But since the world began, nothing that God ever established seems to have been so abused for filthy money as the Mass. Now I know the Catholic Church will try to be very careful in how they talk about the Mass, that, that you're not purchasing the Mass. You're not paying, you know, it, it's a... It, it's an offering. Okay, it is an offering. But still, there is money connected with the offering of these private masses, the, re, the, the requesting of private masses. And any time money is attached to the grace of God, offering the grace of God, there is, uh, there is the potential for abuse. And it's an abuse that was happening at the time of Martin Luther and perhaps could still be happening today. Uh, but it's an abuse that is unnecessary. And we're going to look at that uh, a little bit more, why the use of private masses was unnecessary to start with. And uh, we'll go on in our next section as we finish out Article 24. Until then, the Lord's blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. This is the feast of victory.
victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. This is the God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Are they